Now, this afternoon, government says it is working to review the fiscal terms that will cover all oil exploration activities in the country. This is expected to help firms that have cut major oil exploration activities and potential investors that have put their moves on hold to review their decision amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the Energy Minister, John Peter Meru, uh, at the AFCA Ministerial Roundtable on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the energy sector, also indicated that revenue targets have dropped drastically. Part of the pandemic has gradually led to decline in uh, uh, prices of oil, leading to significant drops in, in our revenue. Uh, in our projected budget for the year, we estimate an oil price of 62 barrels, you know, with an estimated revenue of about $1.6 billion. With this 65% drop, we have lost almost about a billion dollars uh, as a result of the uh, oil price. Uh, our budget, uh, in terms of the fiscal deficit, is expected to, you know, widen. The deficit is expected to widen uh, from, you know, 4% as expected by the end of the year to 12.2% of uh, GDP. Uh, our last year growth was about 6.6% GDP growth. Uh, this pandemic has triggered it far below uh, our expectation. Close of year GDP growth is expected uh, to come as low as 1.2%. Uh, uh, the price of gas was paid at 4.75 per mm BTU, the benchmark production volume of about 86.3 trillion BTU. Oil production generally has been affected as a result uh, of the pandemic. Number one, the prices, and then number two has to do with the volumes. Ghana, prior to the pandemic, have had a very aggressive and accelerated production program where we intend to increase our reserve to production ratio. We went to Parliament of the Republic of Ghana, putting a very brilliant fiscal regime, which enables companies to intensify their exploration regime. What we have witnessed within the period is that global fund has cut short, and so most of those uh, exploration companies have redirected their targets out of Ghana. A typical company we are aware is um, uh, our very good uh, friend, a company coming from uh, um, Norway, Ake Energy. It has a very aggressive exploration program and expected to spend quite in the range of about seven billion US dollars to develop one of the new oil fields. That development has not seen the light of the day. Uh, we in the country for the first time has open our first licensing round with a lot of enthusiasm where a number of blocks have been sent up there to international oil companies to partake. Evaluations of those blocks also have been delayed. And while well, as the world uh, makes a push for investment in renewable energy, Mr. Meru spoke about where Ghana is in our quest to increase renewable energy resources. Of electricity generations to hydrocarbon gas. Today, 60 to 65 percent of our electricity is generated as a result of the gas uh, found that we are. we are becoming more sufficient in terms of our electricity. Our electricity generation in Ghana now is in the range of about 86 percent. The current president has an agenda that by the close of his second term, we should be doing about 90, 91 percent of electricity. Electricity generation largely is because of our competence and our ability to make sure that we increase our hydro and uh, also the uh, hydrocarbon basis that we have. Sufficient gas reserves have been established. What it therefore meant is that we're going to put in a lot of combined circle gas turbines to make sure that we have a mix of hydro and gas fire turbines in, in the country. So the hydrocarbon industry in Ghana is still thriving. We have a lot of fields that are quite feasible and fields that are very prospective that are open up of future explorations. I am a passion to people who believe in green energy. I believe in green energy, I understand clearly the concept of emission and what it means for African countries. But my colleagues, ministers in African countries, that's a way that as much as possible as we all have an intention of migrating to green energy, we should not dare to do this uh, uh, such that the countries, the new industrialized countries that are coming in will begin to suffer. For instance, I don't see how Ghana is going to industrialize with the green revolution that we're talking about, where energy sufficiency in terms of hydrocarbon is still slightly cheaper than solar energy. I don't see how Ghana is going to industrialize with solar energy. I don't see how any African country is going to industrialize 
with solar energy. As much as our attention is towards industrialization, we should also take into concern the fact that energy prices are very really cheap. Most of the developed countries that we witness it today, they industrialize at a very cheap power price. Power price is less than two, three cents. Today in Africa, power is trading, I mean, in some areas, about 13 or 12 cents you know, per kilowatt hour. How can African countries industrialize? And so we don't want to use going green as an index to make sure that the new comers into the industrialization zone, the African countries that want to industrialize should suffer. I totally disagree with that. And if the IEA can open a very big forum for us to engage this discussion, I think I'll be very interested. So that was the Energy Minister, John Peter Mel, who's speaking at the African Ministerial Roundtable on the impact of COVID-19 on the energy sector.